Joining us now in the Hyundai Texans Radio Studio, you've heard of him, J.J. Watt. <laughs> Welcome home. Welcome Thank back. You. How does it feel to be in the building, talking to the current players, yeah. people you've known before? How's that going? It's great, man. It feels great. It's like coming home. It's like... Uh, it's like walking into your old house and seeing all the memories and you immediately start to think about moments and things that have happened in certain places and the people. Um, it's really good. It feels great. You're a softie at heart. Most of us know this. Uh, <laughs> how many times have you shed a tear in the last uh, 48 hours? Uh, I haven't. I haven't. I've, You're good. I've, uh, I've definitely had some moments where it's fun to reflect and think yeah. about it. You know, um, it is still so early after retirement, you know, yeah, I yeah. think that's part of it is you're still, you know, there's a lot going on, there's things happening, but, um, I think having my son here on Sunday will be really cool because that's a moment that, uh, I have, you know, I, I have a moment with my grandpa on the yeah. field here, who's no longer with us. And now I'll have a moment with my son. Um, and I think that there's some really cool, really cool memories that I've had here. And it's going to be really special for me to show my son for the first time. Yeah. What's it like seeing D'Amico run the team up close? Cause you've observed yeah. from afar. Now you see it in the building. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, obviously I know Miko and I know everything that he's about and who he is. Um, but to, to be in the team meeting today, to be in the defensive meetings today and to be able to watch him work and to watch the way he goes about his business, there's no question whatsoever why he's already been successful so far, but why he's going to continue to be successful. I mean, just the way he goes about things, the energy he has, the knowledge that he has combined with the personality and charisma that he has and the ability to connect with these guys. He's a special, special coach. And, and I told them that in the meeting this morning. I said, don't take for granted the coach that you have right now because this is, this is a special guy. JJ, when you walk in, back in the building, is it moments on the field that come back to you? Is it more the relationships, the people? What's kind of the first thing that comes back to you when you walk in the building? You know, I didn't even think much about the field till I walked out there because I, I was walking around the weight room, the training room, you know, the locker room, the cafeteria, and I think about all the memories I have with the people. So it's all it's all about the camaraderie and it's, I mean, the cafeteria workers and seeing them and giving them a hug and sharing stories with Row and Cap and um, talking to the guys in the weight room. And it's it's all of that stuff that comes first. And then you walk out on the field and you're like, oh, yeah, there's a pretty cool play right there. There was a pretty cool moment right there. Um, so it's fun that you have, like, pick sixes as your backup memories. Yeah. You know? <laughs> backup memories. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of memories, so what stands out to you as maybe some under-the-radar moments? Because people ask me, like, what's the greatest game – one of my favorite wins, and maybe my favorite win, which is a little more subtle, is beating the Colts for the first time in Indy in 2015 yeah, yeah, yeah. during that season where it started out so shaky, yeah. but you ended up winning the division. Do you have a couple of those? Um, you know, there's one. Everybody always asks me, like, what was the loudest you ever heard the stadium? And there's some obvious ones. I mean, the pick six in the playoffs mm -hmm. my rookie year. Um, that Thursday night Colts game with the fumble recovery yep. was mm -hmm. huge. Um, the pick six against the Bills was big. But there's a very underrated one. It was a Falcons game. I think it was 2014 or 2015. And it was, I remember to this day, Brooks Reed and I were standing three feet from each other <laughs> out on the field. We were trying to communicate a game we wanted to run. And I mean, I saw his lips moving and I did not hear a <laughs> single thing that was coming out of that man's mouth. My helmet was vibrating. Like I've been in loud stadiums before and I've heard people talk about loud stadiums. And I, I still don't know why that day was that loud. It wasn't like a special occasion, special game, but there was one Atlanta game that I remember being insanely loud. JJ, when you came back in 19, we went out in the Raiders game, and then there was this talk about, oh, he's going to miss the rest of the season, but then you come back, and you're back for that Bills playoff game, and we're down 16 to nothing. Mm -hmm. You were just kind of talking about this as a social team, and you get that sack. That was loud. I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't know if that yeah, was the loudest yeah, yeah. thing. The fumble recovery against the Colts yeah. on Thursday night was the loudest. I mean, that was incredible. But when you get that sack and we're down 16 to nothing, did you realize what you had triggered at that particular moment? What was that moment like when you get that sack on Josh Allen, the game just completely changes? It was, uh, it was a moment that you could tell needed to happen. For I mean, we were down yeah. 16 nothing in the third quarter. Yeah. And I think my, when I watched, it was, I was mic'd up for it. So when I watched my celebration after, I think like I knew in the moment that we needed something right there. And I didn't know I was going to get a sack. I mean, I sure as hell hoped, but my peck was, like, hanging on by literally screws and needles. Um, but I think afterwards, when I celebrated as hard as I celebrated because I knew, like, this is our chance. If we can capitalize on this play and we can get this crowd back into it and we can get our guys back into it, this is going to propel us. 
Now, I didn't know all the crazy stuff that was going to happen the rest of the game, but <laughs> I do think that I felt in that moment, yeah. this, this, if it's going to turn, this is going to be the yeah. moment. I got to think that all the rehab from injuries is something you're not going to miss, no. right? Is that the hardest part of it all? Because I know you love being with the guys and part of a team and everything, but having to come back from big injuries is tough. It's the thing that makes you retire. Like, yeah. It's the thing that makes you retire. Is the, it's, not, it's not the games. It's not the practices. It's not even training camp. I mean, I don't love training camp, but it's not that. It's, it's the Monday morning waking up after a, a tough loss and your body feels like crap. It's mm -hmm. the injury where you go into an MRI and then you come out and they say you're, you're out. You know, you have surgery coming mm -hmm. up. Like, those are the things that, you, that make you retire. Everything about the game I love. I love practice. I love the meetings. I love going out and playing and performing with my brothers. It's, it's just the thought of having to go through another one of those situations that you just don't want to have. JJ, my first year on the South, that was 2014. You had a pretty good year then. I don't know if you know <laughs> this, right. but 2014 was a pretty good year. You did a little bit of everything. In fact, you kind of changed the way that I look at the game book. You know, the game book's got all those stat yeah, columns. Yeah. And I've talked about, we came back from Cleveland, and you had a stat in every single column, mm -hmm. but maybe one. What on a football field do you wish you could have accomplished, not team-wise, just individually, that you wished you could have done that maybe you didn't do? Because you did a lot. <laughs> Is there something yeah. that you didn't do that you wish you could have? Um, that's a great question. Throw a touchdown pass. Yeah, that's yeah, the one yeah. I probably, thought of. Probably would have been something like that, but like that's just that's just ridiculous. Like, I wait. I know you lined up in the Watcat. Yeah, yeah no, you were in the so backfield. I was, there. I was I was hurt then, and we yeah, that was a bad. Thing. You had a throw off of that, I'm sure. Um, we should have. Yeah. Um, not much that year. It's funny you bring that up because I, like I we all knew in the locker room. We look at the stats too, I and mean, everybody sees it all. And I saw like going into the last game of the season that basically everything was full, but safety wasn't on there. And I was like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> like, you're not going to get a safety. Like, there's no, that's just not, not going to happen. And then sure as like the last game, the yeah. last sack to get 20 and a half to get to be the only player to do it twice and to get the safety. Mm. That, was, that was a pretty cool. And getting that safety, I always said this, use a spin move. And that was not really, no. that was not in your repertoire, but you used the inside spin move to get that sack, which yeah. I'd never seen. It was like, yeah. that's pretty good. No, it was, uh, yeah, I agree. I barely ever used a spin move. It wasn't really my thing, but everything kind of came together on that one. I remember on that play, it's funny because I thought it was a safety, and I celebrated like it was a safety, and then you watch the video board, and you're like, all right. <laughs> I, I've seen them call that not yeah. a safety before. Yep. And the ref, they they went to look at it on video review, and I looked at the I know the ref. It was John Perry, and he looked at me, and I looked at him, and I was like, come on, John. Like, come <laughs> on, John. And he came back from the video booth, and as he was going, before he told the crowd, he just looked over at me and goes, you gave me a little head nod, uh, and I was like, all right. There it is. Yeah. All right, you have unique perspective on this because being an entertainer that you are yeah. and also a commentator on a national TV show yes. every week with CBS Sports. So which is harder? You spent a week with the NS SNL yeah. cast, yeah, yeah. all right? Being a cast member for that, being on a TV series because you've done that yeah. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been in the movies, yeah. right? So w can you compare and contrast a little bit here? Because you've lived all of that stuff. Yeah, I would say I... I liked SNL the most by far. Like I love the live aspect of it. I love the pressure of it having to be live and having to do it. Um, and I love the audience. Like you get immediate feedback. You know, movies and TV are much, much different in that nobody's allowed to laugh because it has to be silent to film oh, it. Yeah. So you, you could have a hilarious joke or you could have a great take and it's silent and you're sitting there like, damn. Did I screw up? Did it's I like radio. It's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we can laugh at each other. And, yeah. then, and, and then there's also just so much hurry up and wait. Like football is such a yeah. different world than that world where football, everything is a meet on time. The exact second it's supposed to start, it starts, everything happens. There it's like you could just wait around for four or five hours. So that's kind of the thing that pushed me out of that space was I, it's not my style. Like I, wanted, I didn't want to know my schedule and do it. Um, and SNL was a blast. I absolutely loved SNL. JJ, I get serious for a second. Your letter to the Chronicle was amazing. I always think about this NFL players. They don't, most of them don't play in the city where they grew up. And we know you're famously from Wisconsin, and, and, but you come to Houston. Why did it have such a pull on you right away? Why does Houston mean so much to you the way that it did? I mean, I think, I think it comes down to knowing I mean I grew up in Wisconsin I grew up watching the Packers yep. and so I know the relationship that fans have with a team and I saw a special one up there obviously with the Packers and with the state of Wisconsin 
So I just assumed that that's how it's supposed to be. And so I knew that wherever I went, I was going to try and create that same connection because that's how it's supposed to be. Yep. Now, luckily, I came to a city that is incredible and the people are great and they have such an unbelievable fan base and everybody loves football. Um, now, they might have booed me a little bit at the beginning. We didn't have, <laughs> we didn't have the, the greatest relationship out of the gate, but I think that made the story even better because instead of discouraging me, it only made me want to earn their respect even more. Yeah. And every step of the way, I mean, just like I said in that letter, I, I was telling the story earlier, I'm staying at a house in town that I rented out and the people didn't know it was me renting the house, but they found out just before I got in and they had my favorite barbecue sitting on the countertop oh, when wow. I got in. They had toys mm -hmm. for my son. Like people don't do that in other cities. Yeah. Like people here are family and I'm very, very thankful for that. JJ, thank you for joining us. Have fun on Sunday. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it very much. feels good to be back with you guys, and I really, really can't wait to get back in front of that stadium. This is going to be a lot of fun. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs>